Today I'm going to share with you the ultimate RTX HDR settings for LG OLEDs on the PC. Okay, so what we're talking about here is the latest NVIDIA drivers added artificial intelligence, <laughs> HDR. Okay, this high dynamic range box that we can now check here under adjust video image settings. Just check that box and you can get HDR on any Chromium based browser, meaning Microsoft Edge, for example. So you just open SDR videos and you have HDR picture quality. And let me tell you, it looks absolutely amazing but for some reason so far no matter what I do on my PC it doesn't matter if I change the HDR calibration app settings whatever I do for some reason the maximum peak brightness that the content is trying to output is limited to 649 nits as you can see here so now I would I would like you to test this for yourself on your own PC, okay? Because it might be different. You know how these things are, especially when you get a new technology. We never know. And this is very simple to test. All you have to do is you open a YouTube video and you press Windows Alt Print Screen at the same time. So you're going to take a screenshot that has the HDR information, it has that metadata, and then you're going to open that a screenshot with this free app that you can get on the Microsoft Store, which is the HDR WCG Image Viewer app. Okay, HDR WCG Image Viewer app. So when you open that screenshot with this app, you're going to be able to see this estimated max CLL, of course choose an example where you see highlights okay so again in my experience no matter what i do it doesn't matter which video i use it doesn't matter if i change the hdr calibration app uh, profile here it doesn't matter what i do literally the max ll is limited to 650 nits so basically forcing auto hdr gives me the brightness that i select 800 up to a thousand nits this one is limited to 650 nits. So if you test in on your own PC, on your own TV, with your own settings, and you get the same result, you have an LG OLED, these are my recommendations, okay? These are the settings that I would recommend you to try, and it is very simple. With this LG OLEDs, we have the option to select the tone mapping, okay? So it doesn't matter if you have you know, G1, G2, G3, G4, or G7, okay? Well, so long as LG keeps these settings, which they are fantastic, so I hope they, they still keep them. We can come here and select tone mapping off, or just dynamic tone mapping, but I would recommend you tone mapping off because it is more accurate. It is gonna look better, in my opinion. So select tone mapping off, and then you come here, you step on select mode, and you click 1113111 on your remote. You're going to come to this secret menu that is called HDMI signaling override. And then you're just gonna change the tone mapping, this mastering pick max CLL, change it to 700. Why? Because this is the closest one to 649. And it's going to look as bright as your display can get. Okay, you're going to get that peak brightness for the highlights and it will make a difference. Absolutely, especially if you have a G3, G4. You're gonna, you're gonna be pushing those 1500 nits or who knows, a G4 if it's gonna be 2000 or something like that. So there you go. You're going to actually be getting all the performance and that's, that's fantastic. So now, they should you know, fix this. The, they have to improve this because we have many, many displays now that can do, they are a lot brighter. And I mean, the only displays, the only TVs that have these options to select the tone mapping are the LG OLEDs. So, you know, 
you have a QD OLED or a display that has um, you know higher peak brightness and it doesn't have like a dynamic tone mapping mode to push all the brightness or something like that it is actually being accurate and hard clipping uh, and following the EOTF on a 10% window you know just hard clipping at its maximum uh, peak brightness then this is not going to look the best it can look on that display unless you have something like this so this should be fixed but so far I think these are the best options okay and let me tell you this looks very very good it looks fantastic I am actually very very impressed and I don't see like a skin tones looking red or weird none of that but on the other hand when you see those reds they are popping okay so we were getting that co that HDR color saturation which is great we're getting those highlights the gamma looks correct so near black looks correct and yes you might be able to see some uh, you know AI kind of you know, noises and interference like like I was showing on the previous video like a near black test pattern was looking wet which it was not looking great and other people tested that and they confirmed that yeah it's just not me on my PC or my TV that's just the way it looks because it's AI but I think it looks fantastic I, I'm not seeing color banding for example I, I'm yet to find of course if the source is messed up <laughs> you're gonna see color banding just because the source is terrible but I'm not seeing like color banding this might be even better than auto HDR in that regard okay but so far auto HDR is still superior in my opinion just because you don't have those AI noises you have the peak brightness uh, that you selected on the HDR calibration app you're gonna get those you know for example I wanted 800 nits or 1000 unfortunately you don't get over 1000 with the HDR calibration app um, so again if you have a 1500 nits or 2000 nits display that's still a problem that's something that they should uh, fix too but you know HDR is a mess so you you get the best you can get at each point in time okay and we just hope for the best um, so yeah let me know your thoughts and opinions if you tested this if you're getting a different max CLL this is very simple to test again just Windows Alt print screen get this HDR WCG image viewer app and test the screenshot by yourself uh, let me know you know which one do you like better do you like better this RTX HDR or the Windows 11 Auto HDR that you can force in some browsers to using that program that I share with you link in the description of the video think that looks better but maybe because this is AI maybe this is gonna be able to give you more color saturation in something like this you can get that red color very saturated but at the same time you can keep the skin tones looking more natural when with auto HDR you might get more of a lobster looking a skin tone like the, the skin tones might look more oranges um, because you're just increasing the color saturation for everything so this might be better in terms of the colors uh, just because of that we want to get that color saturation for everything but the skin tones you don't want to mess them up okay so if you want the highest color saturation everywhere but you would you still want to have natural looking people this AI method might be the best actually and if this AI method reduces the color banding because it's, it has this water dilution effect or whatever um, it, it might be great uh, for HDR so I think it is a great idea I hope Nvidia follows up with um, gaming so this option for gaming would be great and we would definitely be able to to do a lot of comparisons with games because um, yeah we could compare native HDR auto HDR you know RTX HDR SDR HDR trick major pain the cactus um, you know a special K 
<laughs> it's like so many options that we could compare and it's, it's very difficult to to determine which one is the best but yeah i hope they follow up and they keep um you know focusing on hdr because we definitely need that um but so far i think this is like the closest thing to plug and play because it's just turning it on and it it just works <laughs> you just turn it on the gamma looks correct you don't have to be you know analyzing so to see if you need a 2.2 icc profile or the hdr calibration app profile that's uh, you know, srgb to whatever so yeah i think this this is great so let me know if you test this you know if you see any issues if you're liking it actually i think it's fantastic and i also actually i i didn't try this before a lot but now that i that i've been testing this i've been also checking this super resolution out and it does make a difference for 1080p videos it does make a big difference um so and also i've been checking out this interpolation with lossless scaling just to get the full experience with uh videos that are 1080p 30 now you can get them you know 4k like hdr like um and also 120 fps like um, and yeah i think that's that's the idea we definitely need that because we have so much low quality content and you have a great display you want to use it okay you have a 4k 120 hertz hdr display that's what you that's what you want that's the maximum quality you don't want you don't want to be watching sdr 1080p 30 fps or 24 fps content that makes no sense that's like using a lamborghini to to go shopping for groceries or something like that so yeah let me know your thoughts and opinions and if you have any questions